Hello and welcome to part two of the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. Today we're going to, we're going to actually be talking about that particular converse. So um, let's just jump straight into it. Last time we remember the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where c is the hypotenuse. Uh, we're going to continue that with, with talking about the converse to it. So in this particular case, if you're given three sides of a triangle, we are going to determine if that triangle is right. And now, if it's not right, that means it's, there's no 90 degree angle, which means it's either acute or obtuse. And we can determine that based off of um, the, the Pythagorean theorem. So, if I give you, for example, um, let's say, well, let's go, if, let's, let's start off with the actual theorem. If a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then the triangle is a right triangle, okay? And let's do a quick example of this on the side. So let's do this in red. Example, if we, for instance, have 10, 24, and 26, we're going to determine if this triangle is a right triangle. So doing the math, this is the largest side. So this is your, your hypotenuse, or if you want leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. So we should have 10 squared plus 24 squared is equal to 26 squared. And I should put parentheses around this test just for good math. 10 squared is 100. 24 squared, I don't know off the top of my head. So let's just do it really, really quickly. 24 squared, 576. Actually, I should have known that. And then 26 squared, I definitely don't know off the top of my head. So 26 squared is equal to 676. Now, if you do the quick math, 100 plus 576 is 676, which is equal to 676, which means they are equal to each other, which means this is a right triangle. Okay? So we have a right triangle here, okay? And for the sake of this, I'm actually gonna rewrite this a different way. I mean, you could also say if c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. I'm putting this in pink, you don't have to copy this down, but um, you're gonna understand why I rewrote it like this. As we know, these two are equivalent, but it's gonna be easier to understand the, the converse this way a little bit better. So um, here's the other part. So. If c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, as we talked, as I previously said, if it's not equal to, then the hypotenuse squared is either greater than or it's going to be less than. And we're gonna we're gonna say if that c squared, if that hypotenuse is greater than a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is obtuse. Now, personally, the way I like to think about this is if the hypotenuse is greater than, meaning greater than 90, kind of like greater than 90 degrees, obtuse angles are greater than 90 degrees. That's why I rewrote it that w this particular way, because if it was written this way, a squared plus b squared is less than c squared. Yes, these two are the same. And yes, we could technically look at it from this perspective, but it's a little bit easier to understand if the symbol is read from the from the hypotenuse. So, let me erase this. If the hypotenuse squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is obtuse. And let's do a quick example here. So, example, let's say, call them, let's put example one, example two. Let's say we have three, four, and six. Okay, we know that this is your hypotenuse because it's the largest side leg squared plus leg squared, three squared plus four squared is equal to six squared. And we're gonna see if this works out. So three squared is nine, four squared is 16. And then I'm gonna put an equals here just because it's consistent, just keep it consistent. Nine plus 16 is 25. And this is where we actually change this to a less than 36. So yeah, you could technically rewrite this or flip this around so the hypotenuse comes first. 36 is greater than 25. 
So I'm gonna rewrite, I'm gonna write this both ways just so we can kind of understand it. The hypotenuse is in fact greater than 25, which means this particular triangle is an obtuse triangle. Okay? And last but not least, and I'm kind of running out of room there, so uh, let's see if we can squeeze it in underneath this. If, I'm gonna rewrite it like this again. The other version of this, c squared, is less than a squared plus b squared. It would be safe to assume. Then, the triangle is acute, okay? And since I'm running out of room, I'm just gonna put it underneath here. Uh, example three. So, let's say we have um, six, eight, and nine. So hypotenuse is nine, and we're gonna say like squared plus like squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. Six squared is 36, eight squared is 64, nine squared is 81, we get 100, and we're gonna change this around now is greater than 81, or 81 is less than 100. So remember, we're always looking at this from the perspective of the, um, the hypotenuse. So in this first case, they were equal to, it didn't quite matter which one was which because there's 676 on both sides. 36 turned out to be the hypotenuse, so I flipped it around, and it's from that perspective, 36 is bigger than 25, so it is an obtuse. And in this particular, particular case, 81, the last one, is less than 100, no matter how you write it. And this is, makes this particular triangle acute, okay? So that is how you determine if a triangle is acute, obtuse, or right, uh, just by using the Pythagorean theorem and using some inequalities. All right, if you do have any questions, please let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.